Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Colt 1911 by Cybergun. Now right off the bat, you can tell that this thing is pretty solid. I mean, it's made out of metal, mostly around the entire frame, including the lower receivers. The only thing that's plastic that I can see is the stipled hand grip here, uh, which actually does feel pretty aggressive, so you're not going to have any issues with the gun sliding out of your hands while you're using it. One thing that I did want to mention is the sheer size of this gun, okay? This gun is nowhere near the actual size of a 1911. This gun is quite a bit larger than an actual 1911, and I have relatively large hands, and even for me, this thing feels a bit bulky. Now, it does weigh quite a bit considering that it's made fully metal. This gun feels very solid. It's got a lot of weight behind it and it really feels like you're holding something that's not gonna break on the field when you're playing with it. I feel like you could drop this quite a few times and you wouldn't really run into any issues there. It's got a metal magazine release built into the frame so you don't have to worry about any finicky plastic magazine releases breaking over time which is a nice touch that they've added, especially at this price point. The magazines are pretty interesting, I gotta say. I've never seen any kind of mag like this. However, with AEPs, it kind of seems that this is the norm. And one thing that I really, really like about these magazines is that you can load these super easily and uh, you never really have to worry about having a few missing BBs out of your mag because these will always load perfectly no matter what. Uh, they're double stacked as well, so you can fit quite a few rounds into here. These magazines are going to hold 29 rounds, which is actually a lot considering how small this magazine is, which is great news if you've got a plate carrier because that means you can hold tons of these little tiny magazines and you basically just won't run out of ammo. The magazines are completely made out of metal. They've got uh, two, four, six, eight screws holding it together. In the box, when you buy this, you're going to get the gun along with one magazine and one 7.2 volt micro battery. This battery is pretty small, but I've never really run into issues with them running out of battery mid game. These will hold up pretty much all day, even if you're playing a milsim or something crazy. They're relatively cheap too, so you can get a you can get a few extras if you're worried about that. So unfortunately with this model, because it's an AEP, you're not gonna get a slide that moves back. Instead, what you're gonna get is a slide that pops off like that and it's going to reveal your hop-up unit, which is adjustable by the way. You can see right here, there's an adjustment wheel. And this is actually where your battery is going to go. It's gonna go right here inside underneath the barrel, and there's a little piece in there that you snap it into. And then when you're putting the barrel back on, it just goes over the front orange tip like that, slides into place, and then you're gonna use the catch to lock the slide in place so that it doesn't come off while you're playing. Theoretically, you could play without the slide altogether, but I don't really see why you would do that, especially considering that it's gonna keep sand and dirt out of your gun. This replica is also boasting a dual action safety. So the safety is built into the grip right here, which means the gun is not gonna go off unless you've got a firm grip on it and the actual safety is off as well. That's a nice feature because that means you can do sick pistol flips and not have to worry about the gun shooting your face while you're doing it. Unfortunately, the sights are not adjustable at all, but I mean, at this price point, you can't really complain about that. Another item that you get when you purchase this pistol is going to be a standard speed loader. Now these speed loaders are just, you know, the normal speed loader. This one's black, feels like a speed loader. I mean, there's not much to really say. It works and does its job pretty well. I mean, it's not astounding by any means, but it gets the job done. Now here's one of the things that I really did not like about this package, and that's going to be the charger. This charger just feels really cheap. The part that plugs into the wall itself feels pretty solid, but then you have this really, really thin wire that connects into the actual charging brick, and this is where your battery is gonna go. It just clips in just like that. But there's this little tiny plug right here. It almost looks like an aux cable, and it, that's where all your power is gonna be flowing through. I feel like that if I stepped on this or even set it down wrong, it would break right off. That would render your charger completely useless and I don't really know where you can get a replacement of these. So that's one thing that I really didn't like about this charger. Another thing that's a serious, not only issue for your battery, but it could be a potential fire hazard, is that this battery charger doesn't have an LED indicator to even tell you that it's charging or if the battery's done. This is not a smart charger. All this does is just continuously provide a flow of power directly into your battery, which means that if you leave this plugged in for more than two and a half hours, it is going to destroy your battery. Your battery will be damaged irreversibly and you will not be able to get a full charge back after that happens. And it could potentially cause your battery to explode, 
So definitely not a very good uh, design choice there. I don't think it would have cost them a lot more to make this a smart charger. In fact, I personally would be willing to pay $10 more just to have that feature included in the box. But hey, you can't win every battle, so just make sure you don't plug this thing in for more than two hours at a time and you should be good to go. As far as the gearbox goes inside of this pistol, it's gonna be a fully metal reinforced gearbox. It's based off of the Tokyo Marui gearbox, which is a pretty solid uh, system. Way more expensive, and there's probably a reason for that, which you'll see in a minute. But the gearbox in here sounds pretty good and it's got a crazy rate of fire. Let me actually just make sure that this thing is unloaded real quick. When you hear this rate of fire, your jaw's just gonna drop. You can switch between semi and full auto on the side of the pistol here just with the fire selector. This comes in handy because if you play at a semi only field, you're actually gonna be able to use this and you're not gonna have to worry about switching it out for something else. Now, it really is disheartening to have to say this, but I really can't recommend this pistol to anyone. And my reason for that is because this thing really only shoots about 30 to 40 feet before the BBs just completely drop off. And that's because of the hop up inside of this at first I believed that I got a gun that just had a faulty hop up and that it wasn't really just the gun and more just the fact that I got a, maybe a lemon out of the box or something. So just to be absolutely sure, I bought another one. And to my disbelief, the second pistol had the exact same problem to a T. This thing does not shoot more than 30 to 40 feet, despite it having the power to do so. So I actually have a SEMA AEP right here, which shoots the exact same FPS. It shoots a little bit slower, but this gun can shoot probably 70 to 80 feet. And these just simply cannot replicate that. And the reason for that is just the, the hop up is bad. I think they may have just skipped the hop up and that's kind of what you get because with these, while they are full metal, this one has a polymer lower receiver. And I think that the money that went into uh, manufacturing that lower receiver, that they saved a little bit of money and that went into the hop up. And this just provides you an overall better package than these. I will be making a video on this pistol later. All right, well now, since I've told you about the horrible hop up, let's go outside and do a shooting test real quick, just so I can show you what I mean by that. Uh, the range outside is probably about 30, 40 feet. And um, you'll see out there what I'm talking about. As you can see, those BBs are barely reaching the fence and the fence is only 40 feet away. Overall, this pistol, you know, for $90, it's not the best that you could get. I would honestly recommend a different kind of AEP, especially for 90 bucks. But if you are thinking about getting it and you want the 1911 body, this will do as a sidearm, but only if you want to be able to shoot 40 feet. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I just wanted to say thank you for subscribing and liking and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.